uh, you have seen this population in this compound. We came here by surprise. It was not planned by us to come here. But by surprise, we were compelled to be here in this compound of United Nations. Uh, what happened and he, on Sunday evening, it was a rambling cutting. We don't know what was the cause. We, the civilian, we thought it is a military thing. Uh, it extends in the next day, on the 16th, it was a mass shooting. Also, some of us, we have endured it. That maybe the situation will be subside. But the third day, we felt that there is a, isn't a group target to be lynched. And you have seen now this population. We are called Nuez tribe in this country. And we are the people of this country. Even the war, we have been fought. For our freedom, it was fought in New Land. But it happened, we were selected in our houses. Today I'm talking to you, I'm a New I'm Mark. If I'm seen, I'm Mark, I'm target. Without any, I'm an MP. I'm a honorable member. No protection, nobody is protecting us. The government, when we start washing from Sunday evening, we felt that what happened in Rwanda, this is what is coming now here. It happened in Kenya, between the law and the Kukuyu. It was subsided because we thought it is a, a struggle for power. And we thought it is a military coup. The military coup cannot divert his gun to his own people. I was targeted in my house. I will talk as an eyewitness. My house was shot with my children. On the 16th, Tuesday in the morning, around, around 7.30, I phoned to the Minister of Defense. And I phone to many people who are responsible, security organ, that what is going on, you come and rescue us. Everyone, a minister also was attacked. A colonel in the a, a brigadier in the police was shot dead. A, a, a brigadier. So we we set out the, the information that there is something that you're coming. What happened in, in Kigali, I think it is coming here. That's why you have seen now this population over 50,000 ethnic, one ethnic group. We felt, we blame our government. The government should come and protect its children. Because this independent, we vote for our president, all of us. Among this population now, there are over 20 MPs from one ethnic group around here now. You have seen now this situation. We are compelled by the situation to be here. It is not the choice of us. That is number one. When we came here, we reported to UN. UN now is doing very well. He's giving us some shelters for our kids, digging latrines, fit latrines, and giving us Yesterday, I think the day before yesterday, they start providing food. Uh, this is what is facing us. We thank the UN because they stood with us. Uh, this incident could not have been far from President Salva Kiir's mind when he addressed the country last December. And will not allow the incidences of 1991 to repeat themselves again. To Monday. To Tuesday, it has become a problem to all of us. 
you have seen now people are talking in the media that over 500 people 600 for us we say it is less we are more those who have been killed it's a group near by name Fighting in South Sudan has spread outside the capital, Juba, after a reported coup attempt at the weekend. President Salva Kiir has accused his former vice president of orchestrating the fighting. I promise you today that justice will prevail. The coup attempt is said to have started within the presidential guard. After the fight, Dinka's soldiers and a militia called the Gelwang targeted newer soldiers and newer civilians. Soon, over a thousand people were dead, mostly newer. The next day, President Salva Kiir sent soldiers in a tank over to React Mishar's house. Luckily, Dr. Mishar and his wife Angelina had escaped the night before. To the outside world, it just seemed like another violent speed bump on the road to prosperity. Except I knew that Dr. React Mishar was planning to fight back. And I knew he was going to fight back in a way that would thrust South Sudan into another civil war. Since the Juba massacre last December, camps like this have served as headquarters for Riyak Mishar as he plans his attacks against the government of Salva Kiir. This is a part of al -Koba. and these new people live around here, including their leader, Dr. Riyak. There's a lot of refugees over okay, here. Yeah. The people coming from back where they get destroyed, they just move up here. Well, this is safe. This place is safe for them. Uh, that's why they come over here. Mishar, along with his London-educated wife, Angelina, are getting by the best they can. This is their first video interview since they fled Juba. Well, I'm Rick Mishar Tang. I never expected to go back to Bush and to fight again. We plan no coup, we plan no rebellion. You know, the, the world calls it rebels, rebellions, and so on and so forth. So we, he's not a rebel. We did not rebel against anything. We were pushed out of our home because of uh, fear for our life. We wanted reform. I said I was going to contest presidential elections, but because he knew he was going to lose the presidential elections, he created this conflict. No matter what, the differences were going to be, or the issues. In my mind, they would be addressed through dialogue, through democratic processes, not this. The wrath of self is is now being expressed on the nerve. It's a country in crisis, serious crisis. Uh, and that's why I was saying I'm hopeful that we will, and I'm confident, because if we don't move <coughs> upwards and we move downward, we'll be worse than Somalia. self Kiir needs to account for the ethnic cleansing that happened in Juba. You know? He needs to account for that. <laughs> Despite the circumstances of their exile, Oh.